So before the break, I was talking about how um, I need to get to know my neighbors. Mm -hmm. Or so says this podcast says I need to go (laughs) get to know my neighbors. Um, Ron, you seem like you know your neighbors pretty well. I have had to restart because (gasps) two of my neighbors move. Oh, no. Yeah. So um, the one next door, I've met uh, he and his very young son. Um, and my wife has met her, the wife there. Yeah. Um, and across the street, they just moved in yesterday, I think. Oh, wow. But Very da- new. Dana's got a plan. What's her plan? Of course she does. Yes, she does. She's the best. <laughs> She's bought these um, big plastic tubs of party mix. Oh. And so that'll be, you know, like you bake cookies or whatever and go over. That's She plans we'll go over and we're going to give them an index card with each of our names and phone numbers. So that That's so good. If they want to call or text about anything, because things happen, you know, uh, we had a house in our neighborhood that caught fire. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. And I would never have n- known the guy's phone number, you know. Yeah, to check on him. Yeah. Yeah. But one of the other neighbors saw the fire and was able to call the, them after they called 911. And um, and so they, they had been out to uh, dinner and were able to get home quick. To watch their house burn. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea, giving out your phone number. Daria, how, how do you feel about your neighbors? Um, there is one set of neighbors that we do everything in our power to avoid. Mm-hmm. They are those, those kinds are the of neighbors. Worst. They're yeah. bad neighbors. Um, but on the other side of us, um, we haven't like been formally introduced, but um, their kids love our cats. <laughs> so they get so excited with our cats out in our fenced in yard. And so they get really excited. And so just the other day, these kids were on their trampoline and they're, they're talking to my cat. So I, I picked her up and let her, let them see her over the fence. And they enjoyed that. And that was, that was a sweet moment. Oh, that's <laughs> cute. Yeah. On one side, um, we have an elderly woman. She's lived in her house for 50 years and she's getting ready to move, which is sad because I'm like, well, <laughs> now I'm going to have to start over <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, little, the little work that I've done. I'm going to start over. Um, and then on the other side is a, like a middle-aged family. They have like teenagers and they're mm-hmm. probably in their early fifties or something like that. A lot of the people on our street have lived there forever mm-hmm. and we're like the newbies. Yeah. Um, and for a while, so dramatic f- from December or the day after, the day after Christmas, the day after Christmas until I don't, sometime last month we had the paramedics at our house three times. <laughs> Um, Get to know your neighbors well that way. (laughs) Yeah. And I was like, man, no one has asked us if we're okay. And we've had the paramedics at our house three times, and no one's asked us if we're okay. They haven't come over to check on us. Wow. You would think, like, one time, you'd be like, oh, I wonder if they're okay. But three times? Mm -hmm. Maybe they don't want to be nosy. I've lived in neighborhoods where it's like it's a public attraction if the ambulance shows up. exactly. And that's rude, too. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So I was like feeling kind of like sad, like wow, they don't even care about us. They don't. Care. <laughs> they don't even care about the paramedics came to our house three times, but mm-hmm. then I had to be like, well, what have you done, right, to get to know them? Why is it all on them to get to know you? You know what I mean? Just like right. Dr. Gatsky was just saying. Exactly. It shouldn't all be on them to come get to know us. And maybe it's because it's been the winter since we've been there, and so we've been cooped up inside. And I had a baby, so I really wasn't going outside because. I'm not trying to get him all wrapped up to go outside. Anyways, mm-hmm. so maybe now that we're outside more often, it'll be more organic. I'm not right. sure. But I was feeling sad, and then I had to like really check myself and be like, you need to chill. So this article from, what is it? The Atlantic, How to Talk to People, How to Know Your Neighbors. A commitment to knowing our neighbors can help us feel more connected and may allow us to experiment with the feeling of being known. Kind of like what we were just talking about with Dr. Gatsky. Okay. So we're going to get into this in just a minute, but I want to hear from you. Text or call 440-546-2255. Let us know your experience with your neighbors. What's it like getting to know your neighbors? Have you found a good community with them? Have you allowed yourself to be known? Or are you kind of just staying cooped up inside and then judging their Christmas trees from inside your windows? (laughs) We've been talking about how to talk to people, how to know (laughs) your neighbors. And we could also... Make this extended into how to know your church community after our conversation um, with Dr. Nick Gatsky earlier today. It's hard sometimes to put yourself out there. Right. Um, and to get to know people around you, whether that's a church community or your neighbors. I'm going through both. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Daria, maybe you more so as like a church community as you're getting to know uh, a new church and new people. What do you? What are your tips and what have you find helpful of getting to know people at church recently? You have to go to things. You can't just yes. <laughs> show up on Sunday mm-hmm. morning and then leave immediately. Like if your church is having an event or a Bible study, life group, whatever, you need to get involved. That is the only way you're actually going to meet anybody. Yeah. And then how do you take it further than that? Dr. Gatsky, you know, said have some questions ready. What would your advice be for like the next step? Just be available. Um, mm. Just good. go up and introduce yourself to people. Um, it's going to require being a little bit vulnerable and a little bit uncomfortable. Um, but that's how you meet really great people. Yeah, you're good at that, Daria. Oh, well, putting yourself you. out there. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, what would, oh, go ahead. There's nothing wrong with small talk. Yeah. A lot of people dis small talk and say, oh, I can't stand it. But it's a great way to break the ice. You know, um, if they're wearing a sports jersey or shirt acknowledging sports in some way, you can you can bring that up and go, oh, I see you're a Browns fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you what are you expecting for the upcoming season? Yeah. Or Guardians, how are they doing? You know, the you um, think we're going to do well this season. We're, we seem to be on a hot streak. Can we can we keep it up? Mm-hmm. And and that gives a bridge for some conversation and then you've got something to build on. Um, but don't feel like, well, if I talk to this person, they've immediately got to become my best friend. And don't do that. You'll scare people us, away. <laughs> yeah, One of us is going to have to mentor the other and we're committed. You know, yeah. it's like a new marriage. No, you're just saying hi. You can have like more than acquaintances with people, mm-hmm. um, but like not quite friendships. Like you, you can have those. Jobs are also a great fallback. Um, mm-hmm. Family, kids, we all have those things in common. Yeah. What do you think is the benefit to getting to know your neighbors? Why should we do that? One, um, you might need help mm-hmm. or they might need help and yeah. you could be the help. Um, moving uh, furniture is a common thing that my neighbors and I have uh, done for each other. Um, also, if if your kids are of similar ages, they're likely to interact, yeah. if not actually play together. Mm-hmm. And so, you you know, it's good to know the parents so that you can judge accordingly if they, you know, do I want my kids to go over to their house? Well, I don't know. Are they, are they good people? Well, if I've been in their house, I know them a little bit. I know whether they're, you know, leaving intravenous needles around the house or uh, loaded weapons or, or if yeah. they, you know, practice good parenting tips. Yes. So, yeah. yeah, I think that those are a couple of reasons. Yeah, uh, I grew up on a cul-de-sac, uh, so oh. we were all pretty close-knit. Um, we would ha- There was one couple across the street that kind of became like surrogate grandparents because um, they, they didn't have any grandkids and their son was estranged. Um, so that to this day is that the husband unfortunately passed away. It's been a really special relationship. And uh, we were the youngest ones, uh, us and my parents, the youngest ones on the block by far. So um, the older people definitely relied on my mom a lot. But she had some really great relationships where she was willing to step in and help take care of some people if family wasn't immediately available. Yeah. Yeah, Eddie has helped our neighbor because she's uh, elderly and he's been able to help like when there's snow or Mm -hmm. other kind of cleanup duties. She has a lot of people in the neighborhood that know her um, and I think some family. So they come over to help her probably every day. Um, But yeah, Eddie's been able to help her just like, well, we have a shared driveway. So if he's, you know, cleaning our side, he's may may as well clean hers Mm -hmm. as well. I remember one time uh, when we were living at my parents' house this last year, uh, the neighbor, one of the neighbors to the left, I think they were both retired. And in the summertime, I'm outside. Number one, because my child needs to get outside. Mm-hmm. for fresh air but also to just like run around so he's yeah. not destroying the walls yeah exactly <laughs> and also i just like love sitting in the sun while he was running around and so we were outside almost every day um and so we'd see our neighbor you know come drive drive out of her driveway and drive back in and trey's a pretty friendly guy and so my son trey he's pretty friendly and he mm-hmm. would just like wave to her and smile whatever and he did it, like every day um and one day she came over and she had a little gift bag and she said to me the other day I was just having a really rough day and your son just did as he always did he just waved and said hi Aww. and she said 
what for whatever reason that day it just meant the world to me mm. and it just really brightened up my day and i know it's you guys are always out here and it's, it wasn't unusual or uncommon for you but just like his you know he was like three at, yeah three two at the time just his kindness just a smile and wave at somebody meant the world to me and she brought him over a little activity book um Aww, that's so just sweet. as a thank mm-hmm. you and so i think even just in those small things where we don't even see it or we don't even know it, yeah. it's just what we're always doing. Mm-hmm. Kind of just like the ministry of presence. Like we're just there and we can wave and we can smile and hopefully right. help someone today. As opposed to just sit self-absorbed and try to ignore that there's someone on the other side of exactly. the driveway. Yeah, it's like we know such intimate details about our neighbors. Like I know you didn't take out your trash today. <laughs> I know you didn't roll your trash to the curb today, but then when we see them in person, you don't say hi or you don't like wave yeah. or smile. It's like we, we try to act like we don't know <laughs> these yeah. intimate details about their life. So I guess my question would be is how can we as Christians be better neighbors mm-hmm. uh, to our direct neighbors, those across the street? How can we be better neighbors to show Jesus to our neighbors? But without, you know, mm-hmm. shoving it down their throats. Yeah. It's it's so easy to, uh, I guess, be judgmental. Uh, yeah. You know, my neighbors are were probably all driving by thinking, is he really not going to mow for the entire month of May? <laughs> and yeah, I probably thought about us too. Yeah. <laughs> I finally got to it, but you know, you can you can drive by and you're like, oh, it's that house, you know, mm-hmm. the one that they try to keep their garage door down because it is so jam packed with <laughs> stuff. Um, or the ones who, you know, have a paint color scheme that uh, just doesn't match with <laughs> anything else in yeah. the world. Yes. And so you you make fun of them, but if you if you make friends with people, you're less likely to do that, and they're less likely to do that about you. Yeah. Yeah, I want to know what you guys think, our listeners. How can we be better neighbors as those who follow Christ? How can we show neighbor our neighbors who Jesus is? Without, you know, having directly to preach at them mm-hmm. through your windows. What are the, like, simple acts that we can do to get to, our, to get our neighbors to know Jesus uh, through our actions? Text or call 440-546-2255. We had someone that texted in and said, We got to know more of our neighbors during the pandemic. We have mm. a deeper relationship with many now. It is wonderful. We help one another and care for each other. One neighbor lost his wife during the pandemic. And we have him over periodically for coffee and muffins just to talk. Mm. He said we are his only friends uh, that he can talk with. My husband helps him uh, some of our single neighbors with chores as well. And then we also get to talk about our faith. Right. Daria, what do you think? How can we be better neighbors to show our neighbors who Jesus is without, you know, having to like, you know, go preach at them? Uh, We kind of talked about this yesterday. I think just be Christ. People mm-hmm. are going to notice that something is different about you. You don't have to be in their face with it, but just having those relationships, carrying yourself in a certain way. And then if the moment is natural, then then you can bring it up um, or if they have questions. But I, I think you're just a great advertisement for Jesus just by how you conduct yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I think also for us as new mm-hmm. new first time homeowners, there's like so much, th- so many things we don't know. <laughs> um <laughs> And Eddie has, you know, some people he can ask, you know, he asks Brian for help every once in a while, but also you see your neighbors every day outside. Right. He could just easily, you know, go over there and strike up a conversation and ask them about, oh, how do you, I don't know, Ron, what do you do at houses? I don't know. How do you fix this thing of a thing? Obviously, I don't do that. (laughs) How do you keep your gutters looking so clean? Yes. (laughs) Mine have mold growing. How do you do that? And then they feel like, oh. Thank you for noticing. Yes, exactly. Or so. you can do like Dana does and make baked goods mm-hmm. or some Chex Mix. Yeah. Party mix. Is that what you said? Yeah. This is, these are good ideas. And now I just need to have, like, how do you reverse it as the person who's new? How do you get to know your neighbors? And Because I can't, I guess I could take baked goods to them. Sure. But it's not the stereotype of yeah. you're new, so I'm going to bring you baked goods. I mean, I think what you talked about with just your you and your son being outside. Um, yeah. You're going to cross paths with these people at some point. Um, just, hello, how you doing? And then you can escalate it from there to actually having conversations. Yeah, we're quite the spectacle. The other day I was mowing the lawn in the front so everyone could see me, and I had my seven-month-old baby strapped in a carrier mm-hmm. on me. Look like, at you, Mom. Facing Way outwards. to go. <laughs> it was like arms and legs are all flailing about. 
and I'm like mowing <laughs> and so many people passed and I was like wow I probably look like such a loser but that's fine you look so, like a boss mom yeah I just I had the time to get it done Eddie was working so mm -hmm. didn't need to wait until afterwards one thing that uh, we did a couple years I can't remember they had a clever name for it but it was around Halloween and you put um, like some treats whether it's candy or whatever into a bag and you basically ding dong ditch it at a neighbor's <laughs> house and so you just give them that bag and run and hide you know and so it's like <laughs> a random act of kindness yeah and i would love to run and hide that would yeah. be the best <laughs> part yeah. about it i don't want them to find me my youngest That's son was issue. was young like maybe six when when we did this and i told him just ring the doorbell and then run and hide behind their cars because <laughs> You know, he couldn't get all the way across yeah. the street, you know. And so he hid. And the guy came out, found that, and he's looking around, and he starts walking around. I'm thinking, oh, no, he's going to get busted. Oh. So I started walking over to meet him. But at least it was treats. Yeah. It wasn't scary stuff. Yeah. You could ding-dong ditch with worse stuff. Oh, treats. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I could give you examples, but nah, not, yeah, no for, thanks. not for this station. <laughs> <laughs> uh so just some food for thought. Get to know your neighbors. And by food for thought for you, I mean mostly for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Daria, as you find a new house, yeah. as you're looking around. Yeah, we're, we're both new to the area. Yeah. Get to know your neighbors. You can show Jesus to your neighbors uh, just through simple acts of kindness, like ding-dong ditching with treats or smiles or waves from your children. So those are just some things I'm thinking about today. Do you ever find yourself missing the more run moment in the morning and you wish you could just go back and watch it again? Well, now you can, so be sure to like and subscribe so you never miss a more run moment.